Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're gonna have a brand new video commentary for BFME to the Rise of the Witch King. It is El Clasico matchup. Good against Evil, Man of the West against Isengard. Between two of the greatest players of Rise of the Witch King. But before we're gonna jump into today's video, I have to make an announcement. As a thank you for all the support in the last weeks and months in my YouTube channel, but especially in my Twitch channel, I'm gonna give away 5 $10 gift cards for Steam. The link how to enter the giveaway is gonna be in the video description down below and this is how it looks like. It's gonna run until the end of August and I think that's gonna be the time when we're gonna be finishing our World Championship. You will definitely need to follow me on my Twitch channel if you haven't done it yet and all you need to do is join the next live stream and type in the chat exclamation mark enter and you will be in inside the giveaway and at the at monday at the end of august we're gonna draw the winner there are gonna be five winners obviously because we will have five steam gift cards to give away all right before losing any more time let's get right into the commentary guys and here we go as on the top side of the map we have the orange man of the west player dj premier against the yellow Isengard player Irby. Both players are participating in the World Championship 2020 and they are both gonna advance to the next round and the chances that they're gonna face against each other in the quarterfinals or semifinals or even the finals is pretty high. If you haven't done it yet, you need to check out our Twitch channel because this is the place where we're gonna stream all those World Championship games. The link for that is gonna be in the video description down below. Two furnaces into the Uruk pit from the Isengard's player Irby, into the third furnace. On the other side I see two farms, three farms actually from the Man of the West player. So he's gonna go full eco first, which is kinda risky. But if you are not gonna get attacked at the beginning of the game, it might work out pretty well. Alright, so Uruk pit is gonna be up on the field for Irby. And now he has some different options. He can go for the pikeman start and go for the creep on the left side of the map, the work layer or potentially the troll layer at the bottom right side, that's gonna be a win-win situation because from the troll creep you are getting more treasure and then afterwards you will be able to capture this in and with Isengard faction you will get the chance to get those black orcs on the field. They cost much less than Urukai, but they are almost equally strong. Alright, Man of the West player was building three farms into the stable. That's not gonna be a stable delete. If it would be a stable delete, he would be just making two farms. So I think, I feel like he's gonna keep up the stable up on the field. But I might be wrong as well. I mean, he can always make the transition right after the first Gondor Knight into the barracks and archer range. That's always a possibility as well. The Urukai are moving forward for, um, from Erby. And uh, he's gonna go for the crossbowman next. The reason for that is because you wanna have some units to defend this area. Just in case the Man of the West player is gonna go for a counter attack with soldiers, but little he knows, he needs to deal now with these uh, Gondor Knights and they're gonna be a great choice against this Urukai, but also against the Crossbowman and Irby has to definitely get some of these pikemen on the field. Warchan will be used, Warchan is a great tool to make those Urukai nearly unkillable. As you can see from the trample damage, they are not taking too much damage, unlike goblins, orcs, they would get one-shotted here. And before the armor fix in the version 8.2 of the patch 2.02, the Urukai, they would take even less damage. And now they will need like four tramples to get taken down from rallying cold horses of Gondor. But eventually he's gonna be able to take them down. So Urukai, they cost 400 each, almost as expensive as Gondor Knights. And yeah, the transition has been already made into the barracks and archer range from the Man of the West player DJ Premier after demolishing the stable after getting one of these Gondor Knights up on the field. Alright, Irby now has Crossbowman and Urukai to protect them, obviously, against those Gondor Knights. And because he was able to stall long enough and buy some time, he will be now in position to protect those furnaces. So this way he can keep his eco safe and great. The work bit is up on the field from Irby as well, as he's going for the upgrade, which costs only 200, so it's nothing too crazy. This is gonna give him the chance to get those Vark Riders on the field. Dark Riders are also very strong. In a 1v1 situation, however, they can't out damage the Gondor Knights if they don't use the whole ability. So buffed Gondor Knights against buffed Dark Riders, the Gondor Knights are gonna win. 
because obviously Men of the West is known for the strong cavalry, while you know while Isengard faction is known for the strong swordsmen, in this case Urukai, and strong pikemen, those Urukai pikemen. Ervi, speaking of pikemen, is gonna go with them to the creep at the bottom right side. During all this time, Gondor Knights are just trying to stall. Oh, nice flank damage. The second they are entering the battlefield, they're gonna get damaged. Obviously, they're not gonna get one shotted. Again, Urukai, one of the strongest swordsmen in the game, but he needs to be careful with those Gondor Knights now running for his life and should be able to get away. The reason why it's so important to keep those Gondor Knights alive is simple because he doesn't have our stable up on the field anymore. It was a stable delete. That means this is the only Gondor Knight he has on the field. That's you know why it's so important to keep this battalion alive, which is gonna force, if nothing else, Erby to play very defensively, has to leave some pikemen around his own side of the map, and has to definitely make some pikemen to avoid a trample damage. DJ Premier is gonna get attacked now from the Isengard player Erby, but he has now soldiers in the front line, spearmen in the front line, rangers and archers on the backside, so he will eventually be able to outdamage the Isengard player, who has only a uh, Half a battalion actually of these crossbowmen, and crossbowmen are not dealing as much damage as rangers, and rangers are gonna win this fight for the man of the best player, DJ Premier. Super duper easy. In the meantime, those Vark Riders were able to trample down those soldiers, the Gondor Knights once again, they are barely able to get away. In this situation, DJ Premier has to make a well, which is coming up now, to heal up those Gondor Knights to keep them alive. Spearmen are getting in position to protect this area against those Vark Riders. Uh, but Erby is like always paying attention and will be able to get away. As Erby was already able to creep this trollia and now has now some black orcs coming uh, are on the way. He's also gonna go for another creep. That's gonna be the second creep Erby is gonna purchase. We will have still the work layer at the left side of the map as well as the troll layer at the top left side of the map, Plains of Lindon, being alive as Eomir, the horse lord of Rohan, is joining the battlefield. Now, actually, DJ Premier has a decent mix of units. Like, he has spearmen to counter the, you know, Vark Riders. He has soldiers to have some frontline to absorb the damage from those crossbowmen. And he has rangers, one of the strongest archers in the game. And he has also Eomir, who is getting dismounted, by the way. Um, but Eomir, unlike Theoden, doesn't give leadership, if you didn't know that, uh, to Gondor soldiers, pikemen, and rangers. He exclusively gives leadership to the cavalry units, in this case Gondor Knights and or Rohirrim. Alright, but on the bright side however for Eomir, he has an outlaw leadership with level 2. I mean with level 4, sorry. Level 2 is only in VFMU1. <laughs> and with that being said, for each kill on the enemy units, you're gonna get money. The farm has been taken down, the Gondor Knights, they gotta be careful. There are two battalions of Vark Riders, but he's taking way too much damage, DJ Premier is not paying attention. Yes he does, and will be able to get away, barely. But the Vel might be taken down very fast because it's a very squishy building. Alright, nice attack here from Erby definitely during all this time. He himself being untouched. That's so great for the Isengard faction. As Isengard will need those furnaces to keep, you know, to be able to keep spamming those expensive Urukai, Pikemen, Crossbowmen and the Vark Riders. And also this level 2 farm from DJ Premier is gonna be taken down. Alright, PowerPoint wise we have uh, 5 PowerPoints collected for the Man of the West player DJ Premier from UK. He has 360 command points available, 600 command points available for Erby from Slovenia, 2.5 power points collected after Warchant and the Kribin. Kribin and Warchant is a great combination to make your own unit stronger while you are debuffing and weakening um, the enemy units. Hey Xabi Naito, thank you for the follow, I'm not even streaming but if you're gonna watch this on YouTube, <laughs> I was just recording when you have followed this channel, thank you for that. All right. Uh, Rangers are here, Gondor Archers are here, we have actually enough defense for DJ Premier, but yet he is losing some of these farms all the time. And during all this time, really important to mention is the fact that Irby himself is being untouched. He has now three level 2 furnaces against zero, I mean actually one, one level 2 farm only for the Man of the West player. With 535 command points against 675 command points from the yellow Isengard player Irby, who was oh just creeping God. another Vorklear that leaves only this troll layer up on the field, as on the plains of Lindon, we have only four uh, creeps, four neutral creeps, two troll layers and two uh, work layers. But DJ Premier now is going for a counter attack. I feel like he doesn't have enough pikemen inside the army, which might be a mistake to move forward, because the rangers, yes, they are dealing incredible amount of damage, but they are also very squishy. They are like glass cannons, 
So once the Valkyrie Riders are gonna be able to reach the backside, these ranges are gonna die within a second and a half. Nice trample though on those con uh, Black Orcs from the end. Once again, and Erby actually making a lot of these, and yeah, I think it makes sense because they cost much less than Urukai. Again, they are almost dealing the same amount of damage. Yes, they are not being as tanky as Urukai, as Urukai are also, are also able to use the shield ball formation to increase the durability even more. But that might be a great attack, because being in a position like this, where he is in front of the Uruk pit, means so much for the Man of the West player DJ Premier, as he can kill the units the second they're gonna enter the battlefield. But during all this time, Isengard player Erby is going for a counter-attack. Eomir now, forest to retreat. Warchan being used offensively from RB. Nice trample with those Gondor Knights, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty damn good. And once again getting away, uh, kind of avoiding those pikemen really nicely. And, you know, the majority of the army has been either killed or very badly damaged. That means uh, Erby shouldn't be able to deal much more damage in this current situation. Because we have also now rangers on the field and they should be able to protect this area. That is a well in the backside. And they're gonna be able to heal up all the time. 8 power points collected now from DJ Premier after Rallying Call and Rebuild. He has 635 command points available. And Erby, after losing a couple of these furnaces, he has now only 575 command points. 7 power points collected though after the War Chant and Kribane. Uh, beside Eomir, there are no heroes on the field from the Man of the West player DJ Premier, but also from the. Never mind, I see, I see Lutz now on the field, who's leveling up quite fast, one shotting those pikemen, gonna hit level 2 now. After killing one more, that's gonna unlock the carnage. But the the time for Lurz to shine is gonna be definitely level 4 with the cripple. You know, you can use it on the enemy heroes like Eomir for example. So this way he can't move and get away. And level 5 when he unlocks the leadership. As we are also as we are also able to see Boromir on the field. And Boromir with the Horn of Gondo is very impactful. And you have like a crazy wombo combo potential with those rangers and their long shot. After stunning the enemy units with the Horn of Gonzo, you can make sure to land multiple long shots on top of the Urukai, Black Orcs, Pikemen and Crossbowmen in order to take them down very fast, which can easily turn the fight in your favor. And this siege works is coming up already for Erby. Um, for me, this is kinda too early. I mean, yeah, pressuring with uh, Ballista is always gonna be great, but I feel like Erby doesn't have enough units to protect those, uh, protect those siege weapons. I think that's gonna be the problem from Erby in this situation. On the other side though, we have still the only one Gondor Knight on the field. DJ Premier was doing a great job saving this Gondor Knight all the time. Kriben is being used to debuff the enemy units and it looks like it will be more than enough to force the Man of the West player back. Lourdes is on the field level 3 already. Again level 4 is gonna be very effective in this situation because there are two heroes or two potential targets for Lourdes and his cripple ability. One of them is the Horse Lord Eomir, and the other one is the Captain of Gondor himself, Boromir, who got killed by Lords in the movie. I hope this is not gonna happen in this game as well. Alright, Rylan Cole was used on those Rangers, and he has now so many of them. One of them is even being level 3, and level 3 Rangers are gonna hit like an absolute truck. Eomir on the other side is level 5 already, has unlocked every single ability, including the Outlaw leadership, which again means getting resources from killing enemy units constantly. For a hero like Eomir, who costs only a thousand resources, is very effective. Whiteman of Dunland, nice long shot, was able to damage them big time. It looks like Rangers are gonna get killed, taken down, but the Gondor Knights are just in time trampling them down. Plus four for each kill. Lourdes is diving in the army, almost level four, but still needs a little bit experience here. Boromir on the other side was actually using the Horn of Gonzo, the second uh, you know, the Isengard player Erby was using the Wildman of Dunland summon, which makes sense. He's now level 3, and with level 5, Boromir is gonna unlock the leadership, which, unlike the leadership from Eomir, is not gonna be only and exclusively for the Gondor Knights and Rohirrim, but also gonna work on those Spearmen, Soldiers, Archers, and even the Rangers. And if I take a look into the minimap, actually, DJ Premier has such a great map control right now. He has 735 command points, has almost... He's almost one point cap, which is really good. So he's making a great use of his available command points. He has summoned the Lone Tower around this area, has ranges inside of that, which is a great protection in the middle of the map. Uh, seven power points collected afterwards. 
On the other side, 650 command points available for Irby, who went for the Wildman of Dunland Summon instead of going for the Devastation. Just because I think he has a great amount of resource income with this two level 3 furnaces and the third one also really close to hit level 3. And each one of them is gonna increase the command points of Irby by 100, which is amazing. The siege weapons are gonna join the fight, he has even a ballista expansion, which is not dealing too much damage, but able, being able to knock down the enemy units all the time gonna give you a chase and a catch potential, which is really great. Cripple ability might be used here, by the way. He's gonna use it now on Eomir, and Eomir is gonna be trapped. There is no way of Eomir being able to get away from this situation. There are so many pikemen around, and when you are on horse, uh, when you are mounted like he was, the pikemen are gonna deal bonus damage. That's why you also potentially gonna see some of those uh, games when, you know, those uh, horses, those horse heroes from Rohan, like Theodine, Eomir, and Eowyn are gonna get dismounted, just because that's gonna make them more tanky against pikeman damage. I mean, yeah, lo losing Eomir kinda is bad, but it's nothing too crazy. Eomir is pretty, uh, you know, a cheap and cost-efficient hero. You can always get him back on the field. He has still a Boromir alive, who is level 3. The Horn of Gondor is available. Multiple long shots gonna be available as well. But some of these, I mean, most of these ranges are still only level 1. I see only one level 2, which is gonna be needed, obviously, to unlock the long shot. Alright, we have small fights at the top left side as well. The Gondor Knights are doing a great job here. There is even a statue up on the field from the Man of the West player DJ Premier, which is gonna give leadership and fear resistant. Fear resistant, however, is not gonna be very impactful against Isengard, because Isengard doesn't have this much fear in his kit, unlike Mordor, for example, with so many ways of fearing the enemy units, right? Think about the Screech of a Fell Beast. Think about the Gatewatcher expansion. Think about the catapult skull, skull shots. There are so many ways, uh, you know, Mordor can scare your units, if this makes sense. <laughs> well, Boromir got crippled down, just like in the movie from Lourdes. But it looks like, you know, Man of the West player DJ Premier has just enough units to win this, dominate this fight. Because the army from Irby is kind of based almost exclusively on these Urukai. That means those ranges in the backside are pretty much untouched. Nice trample here with those Gondor Knights. He has now more of them. I think the stable is up on the field once again. Yes, it's still only level 1. So the transition into possible Rohirrim and also even later on into those Knights of Dol Amroth not gonna happen any soon. Two Ballistas and Lourdes were able to get away. Lourdes is pretty low, but he's level 5 now, which means the leadership is gonna be unlocked. And unlike the Isengard player with the Kreebane, there is no way of the Man of the West player being able to nullify the enemy leadership, so Lourdes' leadership is gonna be, you know, pretty much around all the time. Alright, Ballistas are doing a great job. Again, not dealing too much damage, you know, against units, unlike Catapults from the Dwarven faction with the Flaming Shot, unlike Catapults from uh, Mordor faction or the Trebuchets from the Man of the West faction once they have the Firestone upgrade purchased. Um, we have double barracks, archer range level 2 and stable level 1, those are the 4 production buildings DJ Premier is using now for a while. And now we have a hero joining the fight and his name is a builder. <laughs> there we go, builder is joining the fight boys, watch out, watch out, watch out. Alright, the Gondor Knights are gonna be able to get away once again. And great amount of pressure is uh, being dealt with those, uh, with those Gondor Knights. This tower is gonna get sieged down from these Ballistas. And we have Saruman himself on the field boys. The White Wizard from the Isengard faction, from Erby this time. Saruman is a fear resistant, by the way, if you have, if you didn't know that. I mean, you don't, you can't see it if you don't play this game by yourself. Uh, but once he's level 5, it's a passive ability, just like Gandalf. He's gonna grant you fear resistant. So, that means once Sar Saruman is gonna be level 5, the Horn of Gondor is gonna get completely negated. And won't be able to stun the enemy units from Isengard anymore. Going for a beautiful Bizarre Blast, but DJ Premier is paying attention and being able to dodge the incoming damage. And Saruman is gonna be really uh, not that effective until he hits level 2, which is gonna unlock the Fireball ability, and that's gonna give him the chance to... Ooh, nice Bizarre Blast the second they get summoned, but he was not able to kill many of them. We have also Aragorn on the field, guys, the Fellowship of the Ring. Lord is popping off as expected, but will be taken down. Aragorn getting the last hit and revenging, just like in the movie, his captain of Gondor, Boromir. I mean, that's like a nostalgic feeling right there. Because Boromir got killed from Lourdes, like in the movie, and Aragorn taking the revenge. 
Drohirim Summon is still up on the field, doing a great amount of damage, but won't be able to commit to that Fortress. He has also the Kribian upgrade on the Fortress to just increase the vision, and that's indeed the vision right now we see from Isengard player Erby. He is able to see half of the map only with this upgrade on the Fortress. Ballistas are on the field, Ballistas is an expansion around the Fortress, doing a great job. Saruman was able to get away, really close to hit level 2, but has to wait for the cooldown of his abilities to be ready. Batman of Dunland will be summoned on top of the Rangers, Fiesta is incoming, the Rohirrim are going back with Eomir level 7, and long shots are incoming to one-shot those Wildman of Dunland, but those Ballistas are just dealing enough damage to stall the fight and turn it in favor of the Isengard player Erby, as Aragorn is using Atelas to heal himself and will be barely able to get away. And there is no lords that can trip, cripple him down anymore. Remember, lords from uh, Isengard player Erby has been taken down before. Blitz Master is available, and you know, Fire Ball will be used now finally from Saruman, who is now level 2. 15 power points almost collected, 650 command points available, and Erby has the chance now to go for attack. 15 power points now, the farm is gonna be taken down. He has marketplace with the grind harvest to increase the resource income from those farms outside by 15%, but that's nothing in compared to Field of Fires that's gonna increase the resource income from those lumber mills by the yellow Isengard player Erby by 70%. So, Isengard has so many tools as we know. I mean, it's the, the one faction, the one and only faction that has like unlimited amount of resource income at this stage of the game. And if this is not gonna be enough, you can always go for the industry as well. Use it on one of your level 3 furnaces, and he has so many of them. So he's getting so much money, and with industry you can buff that even further. And Erby now going for the armory, and we will see those sexy Urukai pikemen with those heavy armors and forged blades. Aragorn is gonna be tricky though, because I feel like Aragorn is gonna be one of the heroes that can kinda be a one-man army. Think about how, how Glorfindel is, and I feel like Aragorn in many situations are gonna be even stronger, or is gonna be even stronger, than Glorfindel from the Elven faction. With the Blade of Purity, with the leadership unlike Glorfindel has, with the army of the dead, the Offbreakers, I mean, that can be so much. And I feel like at some point, the Man of the West player will also need to make some siege weapons, because to deal with those Ballistas, and as his army is mainly, and almost exclusively, is based on Rangers, and Tower Guards, and Spearmen, um, it's gonna be hard. The level 2 farm or level almost 3 farm will be taken down next. The devastation is available, can be used here, will be used here. Look how much money he was able to get. 800 command points. Half of the map is yellow, half of the map is orange. That's gonna show you how balanced the 1v1 between those two players is. And the chances that they fill, that they potentially will face against each other in the in the quarterfinals, semifinals of the World Championship with a cash price of $500 is pretty high. And if you don't want to miss those games, guys, you need to check me out on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is gonna be in the video description below. As we have Tom Bombadillo special summon, and we have now level four beautiful Sonic Song ability here. Fiesta is happening once again. Saruman is level four, only one level away from getting level five, which is gonna unlock his hidden fear resistant ability and lords holy moly is the one man army himself the most cost efficient hero in the game of rise of the witch king in battle for middle earth 1 and also in battle for middle earth 2 but the yeti sword from aragorn hitting like an absolute truck on the saruman saruman has to run for his life luckily um aragorn is not as fast as glorfindel and won't be able to chase him and catch him and take him down we have 10 power points collected now from the Isengard player erby 825 command points available on the other side we have 980 command points available almost full command points for the player from uk the orange man of the west player dj premier seven power points collected after the rohirrim lone tower the Tom Bombadillo summon, the Rallying Call and the Rebuild, the tower here is gonna be taken down by those Condor Knights, and also the Man of the West player went for the Armory, went for the Blacksmith, I mean, and he's gonna go for the level 3, which is gonna give him the chance to get the Heavy Armor, the Forge Blades, and the Banner Carry Upgrade on his Rangers, Tower Guards, Condor Knights, and all the other units he will be getting on the field. Uh, Boromi on the other side is now level 4, he can use the Captain of Gondor to give experience to those Rangers potentially, and level them up. Aragorn is level 4 as well, has leadership unlocked already, which means a double buff action, as long as Kribin is not gonna be used from Erby. Towers coming up once again. The Sloan Tower, I don't think it's gonna be very uh, impactful in this at this stage of the game, because there are Ballistas on the field that can outrange a tower and take it down quite fast. 10 power points collected, Saruman is doing work, level 5 unlocked, and that's gonna be a huge power spike for the Isengard's army, 
because the Horn of Gondor from Boromir is not gonna be impactful anymore. And I feel like at this stage of the game we will definitely need some bigger summons like for example the Summon Dragon from Isengard, the Army of the Dead or the Earthquake from the Man of the West faction. I think those abilities are gonna be very necessary, especially for the Man of the West player because he has no siege weapons around. And I feel like he has enough money and resource income um, to get some siege weapons up on the field. But the problem is he's almost command points kept already. So he has those um, really expensive heroes like Aragorn, both in terms of resources but also in terms of command points on the field. Gansalf, a hero I would love to see in this situation, unfortunately isn't on the battlefield yet. And I feel like heroes, they're gonna lose so much value once Isengard's player, Erby, will have upgrade on his, uh, upgrades on his units. And those Urukai, they are tanky as we know already. And they're gonna be so much tankier now with the leadership of Lords, with the Warchant, and also with the heavy armor and Aragorn. I mean, Boromir got crippled down, that's what I mean, you see? Horn of Gondor does do absolutely nothing in this situation. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. We have Saruman in there, boys. Long shots are incoming, but they are not stunned and they won't take any damage. I mean, multiple long shots, not even kinda getting them down to 50% health. We have Fireball, the Saruman, the Black Magic is coming in clutch. Yomir is here, can't really do anything. The leadership is getting completely negated from those cave prebane. They are still flying around as you can see. Aragorn though, Blademaster, level 5 pikeman. Isengard is fully committing. And Aragorn is hitting like an absolute truck here. And Saruman will be forced to disengage. But now Aragorn has to be careful because his Blademaster is on cooldown. Eomir has to be careful as well. Isengard is still alive and dealing massive amount of damage with those Urukai and Pikemen. The Rohirrim in the meantime are chasing down the sky, but the Thunderbolt will be just enough to save the day for the player from Slovenia, Erby. One of the favorites in the World Championship with a cash prize of $500. We have a level 3 archer range, we have Grand Harvest getting all the upgrades purchased, a level 2 stable, as we're gonna see some more Rohirrim soon, Eomir was able to get away, Aragorn, I can't see Aragorn though, Aragorn is running for his life, Elendil will be used to make the enemy units run away, Aragorn has to be careful because heal is not available, and Atelas is also on cooldown, needs 3 shots, but the Ballista will be taken down, this fighter upgraded, ranges are gonna deal now much more damage, as Speechcraft is being used, no, it was like he was using Speechcraft, Saruman is diving in, the rangers they gotta be careful, there is a tower, he can always put them inside, Fireball will be used on those rangers dealing massive damage from a safe distance, and that's what I mean before, now Saruman has like all the important abilities unlocked, beside the Dominate which can be used on the enemy units, he is still more than 3 levels away from that, 15 power points collected for the Man of the West play DJ Premier, and he has full command points. On the other side, we have almost full command points also for the Yellow Isengard player Erby. 850 command points, 25 power points collected! You know what time it is, boys. You know it is time for the biggest shenanigan in Rise of the Witch King. And this Saruman is so impactful and he's gonna go for the Summon Dragon. Summon Dragon will be used now on top of the rangers, knocking them away, miles away. And now this dragon is the best... A bit, I mean, best summon when it comes to take down the structures, by the way. Multiple long shots, yes, he will potentially be able to deal with those Urukai around. But how you wanna deal? Look, this massive damage! He's one shotting the entire backline of structures. The stable level 2 is gonna be taken down as well. No more archer range level 3, no more stable level 2, no more blacks, uh, no more farms, no more marketplace for the Man of the West player as well. As you can see, these farms are not glowing anymore, so he needs to replace so many structures and. On the other side, Man of the West player is also so far away from getting his 25 because he was, he was going for the Tom Bumble deal, he was going for the Rangers, or Donadan allies, he was going for the Rohan allies. So he needs at this point 11 more power points, no, 21 more power points actually to get... Ooh yeah, holy moly, quack, what the heck was happening there? Did you guys see that? Like the Black Magic Lightning Strike, the big one, and the small one, the Thunderbolt from Saruman, almost one-shotting the entire Rohirrim summon within a second and a half. Yes, they were able to take down one of the furnaces level 3, but that's gonna be pretty much all they can do. And what a great defense from Erby, from the young Slovenian player. The only hope in the Man of the West faction lies again, you know, in the king oh, himself, Aragorn, Araton's son, has to 
do something about the current situation. He's three levels away from getting to summon the Offbreakers. You know, Offbreakers, they can single-handedly can take down an entire army from Isengard. They don't care about armor and forge blades. They will deal massive damage regardless. But he is still three levels away from that, which is a lot. Lords on the other side is level 8, which is going to unlock the pillage, which means even more cash for the Isengard's player RB. He has 10 power points collected already after the Dragon Summon. The Dragon Summon was able to kill both the Barracks. He was able to kill the Archer Range level 3, the Stable level 2, and the Marketplace. Everything has to get replaced, which means Isengard's player RB has now his momentum, has now the time for him to shine, and has now the tools to punish his opponent after taking down almost every single one of his production buildings. There we go, Barax is level 2, he is now building multiple archer ranges and going for the marketplace next. The good thing about the marketplace now is he was purchasing the upgrades already before the second it comes up he will always have the effect. And the Man of the West player DJ Premier is for the first time, after like 10 minutes, dropping below full command point and the map is turning yellow in favor of the Isengard's player Erby. If we hit him, bam, fireball. And this guy, I mean, Saruman is a hero we surely don't get to see that often in the World Championship. I mean, the games are very competitive, but this is also a very competitive game between Erby and DJ Premier. But you can see how impactful a single hero can be in the late game once he has all the abilities unlocked. So is Aragorn. Like, Aragorn, one-man army, just deals enough damage, I mean, like, more than enough damage, actually, with his, I mean, he, you can't fight him. You can't fight him. And Tom Bombadil is a great hero counter as well, as he can knock down the opponent heroes all the time. Aragorn is dealing so much damage to Saruman, but Saruman is a little bit faster. Tom Bombadil has to, again, keep knock him, knocking him down. Saruman, nice Sonic Song once again from this Tom Bombadil. 13, almost 14 power points collected. The tower has been taken down from these ballistas. Aragorn is still quite healthy. Elmir is level 8, but unfortunately, after level 4, he's just getting a slightly damage boost and an armor boost nothing too crazy i mean there are heroes like you know saruman lords for example aragorn guns of those heroes they get benefits from each level so much there are heroes like faramir and boromir and also heroes like eomir they don't receive anything after such a after a certain milestone like in eomir cases it's a level four in which you unlock every single ability and then it's not gonna be that important anymore to level them up Alright, 15 power points, 875 command points collected for Erby. On the other side, 17 power points now available for the Man of the West player, DJ Premier. Elmir has the spear throw, ability, spear throw ability ready, but I'm assuming it's not gonna be enough to burst down this Saruman. I guess we're gonna figure out if this is gonna be the case, but he's already healing up, and that's why he's gonna abort and not gonna use his spear throw. Aragorn got crippled down, that's the only way you can stop this guy. He's very tanky. Atelas is on cooldown though, and Zo is healed, so he might be in trouble here. Now he's released from the spell, Saruman is diving in, has his Wizard Blast ability available, which might be used here. Aragorn is running around a little bit too much. Nice Wizard Blast, level almost 8 Saruman. Uh, Saruman, he's two levels away from getting the Dominate unlocked, but he needs to be careful. He's taking still a little bit damage here from the rangers around this area. Aragorn got taken down and I, I think almost 400 resources got gained. DJ Premier was kind of over, you know, overestimating his Aragorn and his tankiness. There is just too much to handle for Aragorn. And even the king of the men of the west can't stand against such a reckless hit. 23 power points collected, full command points once again for the men of the west player. DJ Premier, the ballistas are getting targeted down from those Rohirrim and Eomir, but there are so many pikemen and Urukai with upgrades around. And it looks like that the men of the west player didn't even purchase. He purchased actually the heavy armor, did he buy that on the Rohirrim though? That's a big question. Nope, he didn't. Quite expensive, still 225 for each upgrade. Tower here will be potentially taken down, and he's gonna go for the Cloud Break, boys. Cloud Break is gonna just delay his uh, Army of the Dead Summon once again. I mean, it can help him out of the current situation, but think about it like this. We have now Freezing Rain. Ah, I take it back. I take it back. Actually, Cloud Break makes sense because Cloud Break not only gonna stun the enemy units, but also kinda cancel the Freezing Rain's effect, which would make the units from the Man of the West player much weaker all the time. Eomir is getting crippled down and this Lord, ladies and gentlemen, is a hero killer like crazy. Ooh yeah, bomb chakalaka boys, nice one, nice with that blast from this young Saruman and if this is not gonna be enough, he's just gonna use another fireball, plus 12 in the bank for each kill on this Rohirrim and Rohan can't deal with the Isengard unlike in the movies. 
Because unlike in the movies now, Rohan has also to deal with a Sauron who was not participating in the big war of Helm's Deep. All right, siege weapons are still getting spammed against zero siege weapons so far from the Men of the West player. The time is in favor of Isengard in my book, because the Summon Dragon is recharging quite fast, it's already more than halfway gone, I mean more than halfway ready, and while the Man of the West player is still like 15 power points away from getting his own 25. I mean, this kind of makes sense, even though the Rangers uh, from the Summon did not do anything, Cloudbreak kind of makes sense because he needed something to cancel the Freezing Rain. But, you know, this is like a win-win situation, because the Cloud Break doesn't stun the enemy units constantly, and it's now kind of off. Uh, while so the, the, man, the Isengard player Urban now knows that, you know, DJ Premier is still far away from his 25, which would be an army of the dead in this situation, which would make the most sense if you think, I mean, if you agree with me. Because army of the dead, you will need some stuff that can kill this army here from Isengard, which is much easier said than done, because every single one of them is being upgraded. And... Isengard is just so rich, even though he has only 900 command points, his command points kept. I mean, only 900 sounds kind of harsh, I guess. But he has like so many lumber mills, level 3 in the meantime, building towers here, level 3 furnaces all over the place. And getting so much value of the field of fires as well. Harvesting plus 20 for each time the slumber mill worker is going back and harvesting those trees. And look the army from Isengard as well. Vision of Palance is being used. And... Yes, even enough now for, to go for industry, but I would say that's gonna be an uh, overkill in this situation. He doesn't really need anything else to get more money. This plus 6, plus 8, plus 10, you are able to see plus 150 from killing a statue uh, for the for the Isengard player RB as well, just because of the pillage as Lourdes is all about to hit level 10. And yeah, Lourdes, I think you need to agree with me, guys. Lourdes is the most cost efficient hero in the game. The builder is gonna get potentially away. Nice micro here from RB. Trying his best to keep those two ballistas alive, as this is like a like a damage he's gonna be able to deal to those farms, to those level three structures, and take them down very fast from a safe distance. The deal is just watching. <laughs> I mean, at this stage of the game, everything is kind of uh, too much for the players to handle. Obviously, you're gonna lose your focus. Uh, Man of the West player is now kind of very busy defending. Isengard player is now 21 power points collected. It's gonna be very close for the Summoned Dragon. Um, or Dragon Strike, I think the, the ability is called, right? 18 power points almost collected. Long shots are incoming from those rangers. And there are so many rangers. And you can see, so many long shots were incoming. But plus six on those tower guards like crazy. And the rangers, they were not even, they were not even able to take down. Like 10 rangers at the same time. Oh, the Thunderbolt though. The Thunderbolt though. And guys, Saruman is almost level 10 as well. He's half a level away from that. And he has Fireball ability available. So he can use it now. And the Saruman, guys, agree with me, please, in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about the Saruman. He's so powerful. And I think he has like a like a biggest impact right now from the Isengard army since the moment he came on the field. And he didn't die once, I guess. Uh, he's, he has done so much work for Irby. And I think he's one of the biggest win conditions at this point for the Isengard's player. Fireball can be used once again. I mean, he has potentially the Thunderbolt here ready anyway, right? The Lightning Strike from the Fortress, which can be used again on this Rohirrim from the Summon. And take them down very fast. Uh, Eomir got crippled down once again. And that's, uh, that's a nightmare right there for the Man of the West player. His heroes are getting crippled down all the time, being taken down all the time. Is he gonna use the, the Thunderbolt potentially? The Lightning Strike? Maybe not. Eomir has been taken down once again. 25 power points finally collected for the Man of the West play. He's gonna go for the Army of the Dead as expected. Where is he gonna use it? Thunder, the Lightning Strike is being used in the middle of the map on these Rangers. Just like the, the you know, the kind of the border of the range of the Fortress. You can't use it many, you know, much further, I, I think. Like, this, is, this should be the limit of the ability. I might be wrong. The Ballista is gonna be taken down. Army of the Dead is still being held. He will potentially be forced to use it here to deal with the army. I mean, the Rohan allies are still around. I think that's the time to use it because then you will have also units around to take down a couple of these structures, which is easier said than done. But, uh, Wizard Plus is available, might be used here, will be used here. Saruman is getting closer and closer for the level 10, which is gonna unlock the Dominate. And let me tell you that much, Army of the Dead, fight for me. As Aragorn would like to say, Aragorn and Army of the Dead just close to him. That's like nostalgic right there. And Boromir and his captain or his king, Aragorn, side by side. Aragorn is also almost level 9, which is gonna unlock the leadership. During all this time though, during all this time, we have now 
the Dragon Strike available from RB. The Army of the Dead is doing work. Lourdes is gonna be taken down next. And I think he's gonna wait for the Summon Dragon as well. So Dragon Strike plus the Summon Dragon. This is a combination I think he will be dealing so much damage with. Dragon Strike will be used first. Look the damage now, boys. He's gonna fly over the structures. Gonna burst them down. Four structures are getting killed. But so many units as the fire on the ground is burning them down. As the Mad King would like to say of Game of Thrones, burn them all. And I think that was a dragon from the Mad King of Game of Thrones that was doing the work for him. Alright, the Summon Dragon is gonna be ready as well, which is gonna be used around um, in the other side of the map, which makes, or in the other side of the fortress, which makes the most sense to just snipe down all these production buildings. The Siege Works, which is finally up on the field for the Man of the West player. EG Premier has to react to that. I mean, losing all the production buildings at this point. It's gonna hurt him so much. Isengard player lost so many units to the army after that, but he has like two Uruk pits, four Uruk pits, boys, four Uruk pits up on the field. Siege works, level three work pit, level three armory, so much, so many lumber mills, so many furnaces, level three, and he has like pretty much unlimited amount of resource income. And army after that did nothing against the structures, unlike these dragons. Like two dragons at once, the summon dragon. And the summoned dragon and the other summoned dragon or dragon strike let me check again <laughs> i'm actually stupid today it's it's dragon strike my bad my bad so dragon strike and summoned dragon all right uh we have uh rohirrim now coming from the stable level two i mean he lost pretty much like the most important production buildings he has still a level two archer range a level two barracks a level one barracks here he has to rebuild the stable once again has lost the marketplace again, so he needs to definitely replace the marketplace and has to make some of these trebuchets very fast. Trebuchets, unlike the siege weapons from the Isengard faction, the Spalistas, are not gonna be only effective against the structures, obviously, with the Firestone upgrade being purchased, but also against the units. It deals much more damage than a Ballista shot, which makes sense. It's a flamed, flaming shot of these, of these trebuchets hitting like an absolute truck. Boromir is level almost 6, his King Aragorn is almost level 9. On the other side, we have Lourdes back on the field, level 10, uh, full level. Uh, I think Saruman is also very close to be level 10. I can't see him here though, maybe he died before, I can't even tell you. But I can tell you that Isengard is going for a massive attack. The fully upgraded Isengard units, these units are so damn tanky. Cloud Break just in time, Vision of Palantir is gonna be used. Lourdes is gonna draw his sword to use Carnage, which is gonna deal even a lot of damage to this tower. Warchan is gonna be used to make them tank here. Uh, during all this time, I, you know, the Man of the West player is using some of those units to deal some damage to the eco by taking down those level 3 mills and level 3 ferns from the Isengard player, Erby. And yeah, the thing is, Erby doesn't have enough units to defend such an attack. The Rohirrim are getting sniped down so fast against those Urugai and against those pikemen with fully upgrades. Uh, the stable forward has been taken down and the village ability is coming in clutch from Lourdes, guys. It doesn't only work on the units, it works also on the enemy structures, which is helping Isengard a lot. Okay, the Captain of Guns ability from Boromir has been used actually. You have so many ranges on the field and every single one of them has fire upgrade purchase. Ballista expansions, arrow tower expansions are coming up for Isengard's player, but the armory level 3 is gonna be definitely taken down, which is great for the Man of the West play DJ Premier. This way he can't um, upgrade his units until he will be rebuilding his armory. Okay, he was also able to take down a couple of these level 3 furnaces, level 3 mills are taken down, so he was able to deal some serious damage to the eco, but look the power points are going to the sky boys. And we have Earthquake now boys! That was not the Shatter Hammer from Gloin though. Earthquake was, has, has been used actually to kill multiple Uruk pits, he has still two Uruk pits left on the field. So that's why you, why, you wanna, why you wanna split your production buildings in the late game. Especially now for the Man of the West play, it's gonna be very important. Why? Because he knows Summon Dragon is gonna be available at some point and a Dragon Strike is gonna be available at some point. And because of that reason, what you need to do is you wanna split, build, not very everything like a clumped, which you, what, what you normally do in the early game to have better protect, uh, protection, protection <laughs> for your resource buildings. But in the late game, I think it's gonna be much more important to split them. Like, you know, make the make the siege works potentially here. The barracks you can leave here, the stable you can make there. So you have enough space in between the production buildings that one dragon strike uh, from Isengard can't kill every single one of them at the same time. 
Atelas will be used. Boromir got crippled down. Tom Bombadil will be summoned. Lurch is gonna draw the sword. A Saruman is coming. He's almost in nearly level 10. And Fireball will be used to knock both heroes at the same time in the hands of these beautiful lords. Even Aragorn is getting taken down so fast from this Urukai with the upgrades. Plus 333 from killing the man of the vest, King Aragorn Aratorn's son. Almost every single power point is, by the way, unlocked for every single player. Freezing Rain, there is no point of you using that at this point because Cloudbreak is gonna counter that. Even though Cloudbreak is on cooldown, by the way, guys. So I think, you know, you can always use your Rain when you know that the Cloudbreak is on cooldown. This way you can get benefits from it. And the game isn't over yet, but I can tell you, even though this is a replay commentary, we are not casting this game's life right now, that the players, they gotta be exhausted at this point. They gotta be very exhausted. We have again level 2, level 2 barracks, production buildings, siege works level 2. No cutters on the field. So I didn't see a single trebuchet so far from DJ Premier. He also didn't purchase the fire zone upgrade because his resource income is not looking that great. He's building multiple farms at the same time at the same area just to increase his command points at this point. He has still two level 3 farms left. Has to replace the marketplace once again to get the value of the grand harvest. Which is, gonna increasing, which is gonna increase the resource income from these farms by 15%, which is really nice. But he needs to expand elsewhere to have more than command points only, because he is running out of resources as well. Rohan Alice is gonna be ready soon, Donadan Alice is ready, Lourdes is running for his life, but he's still quite healthy. Level 10, he has 3500 health, almost 3480 to be precise. On the other side, 800 command points available for Irby, um, but Irby, I would say, has a greater resource income even with less command points just because of the devastation, because of the industry now being used, uh, and because of the Field of Fires, obviously. Even though Field of Fires, I think at some point, is gonna lose the value because there won't be any more trees around to harvest at some point. You know what I'm saying? And Field of Fires needs Lumber Mills. Lumber Mill needs those trees around. Ranger allies summon multiple long shots doing absolutely nothing. To those units on the Tainted Land. Tainted Land, unlike the Tainted Land from Goblins and Mordor, has also like a pillage ability. Uh, as soon as long as you keep killing units on top of your Tainted Land as Isengard, you will get money from doing that. Just like with the pillage ability from Lourdes, which will need you to get level 8. Um, but you know, it can't stack, obviously, you can't have this and the Tainted Land bonus at the same time. So you can F either one. You will always have one in this situation, but it's not gonna stack, which makes sense. You imagine you stack this kinda right and you kill you get like a hundred for killing one tower guard or something, which would be kinda kinda broken if you think about it. Alright, Isengard again, you know, so look at this. Devastation, uh, tainted land, uh, you know, industry, field of fires, Lord's pillage ability. There are so many ways for Isengard to get the money, but Man of the West has the summons on his side. But holy moly, guys, Dominate has been used to fight for me now. Irby is saying, I'm your real master. You need to fight for me. And it's, tell let me tell you that much, boys. It's constantly. You know, it's not like in Battle for Middle Earth 1, which makes, which makes you kind of, for like a short period of time, use the enemy units for yourself. No, 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 no. It is forever until they die. Now, Rohirrimar fighting for Isengard. Now... Yes, Rohirrimand that is controlled. That's how strong Isengard can become. And this Lourdes, I can't even tell you. I didn't even count. Maybe you guys counted. Let me know in the comment section below. How many heroes did this Lourdes cripple down since the beginning of the game until this moment? This is what I want to know. Aragorn got handicapped now. Can't move away. Blade, of, uh, Blade Master from Aragorn is being used to make him more tanky. But he can't use it to deal any kind of damage. And ah, he's still one level away from it, you know, he's still one level away from getting uh, to the point where he can summon another battalion of army after that. The builder from Erby has been taken down. Erby again playing with multiple Uruk pits. He has four, once again, a war pit level three in the backside. Uh, Armory is back on the field so he can keep up, you know, purchasing those upgrades on his units. Um, and Man of the West play on the other side has army after that almost back up, which will be definitely used potentially in the middle of the map to kill all the enemy units, which would make the most sense. Army of the Dead is not that great when it comes to take down the enemy structures. It's like an army killer summon, right? You think about like how Balrog works. I mean, 
for me, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but for me, the best ability when it comes to take down the structures is definitely the Summon Dragon. Because the, the damage you are able to deal is like every single attack of your Summon Dragon is something like a breath fire from, from Balrog. So it deals so much damage around, it's like a huge area of effect damage as you are able to hit multiple structures at once, like the breath fire from, from Balrog. The only thing what Balrog is better at is you can kill many units and heroes with also Balrog Summon. Because the Fire Whip can be very effective against heroes. Obviously, the summon damage when once Balrog is getting summoned, the, the area of effect damage you are able to deal with. Uh, Balrog is also pretty insane. Uh, but other than that, Summon Dragon is definitely the way to go. Army of the Dead still needs a couple of more seconds. I would say like a, like 30 seconds is gonna be needed during all this time. Man of the West player is gonna keep losing mess many of these uh, many of these production buildings. Frozen Fro Freezing Rain is available, so he can just use it now. Because he knows there won't be Cloud Break available anymore. So he can just use it and debuff the enemy units. Freezing Rain also nullifies the enemy leadership, which gonna shut down Aragorn's leadership. And this uh, statue in Aragorn, by the way, once again got crippled down. What? What's the matter if you have a strong hero like Aragorn, but you can't even use him? <laughs> because he's permanently locked down, dude. That's so unfortunate for the Man of the West play DJ Premier. I think he, it has to be tilted, tilting to play against. Oh, the Watcher summoned. I didn't even see that on top of the enemy units. The Hobbits were summoned, I guess, around this area. The, 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 yeah. And may, many other units potentially has been taken down. As Man of the West play is kind of trying to go for an offensive move. For a potential counter attack. The farms are getting sniped down as Man of the West player is getting... Actually, he has still so much money. He has so much money still, he can even end up replacing every single structure he lost. Army of the Dead will be used defensively. But Salmon is so fast, I think he will be able to get away when he is just gonna use Vision of Palantir, which is gonna give him, by the way, also increased movement speed. Again, the Summon Dragon and uh, the Dragon Strike are both gonna be available soon. Army of the Dead is dealing a decent amount of damage to Saruman. Um, I'm wondering if you can actually use something like Wizard Plus or Fireball to kill them. It's quite fast, and Army of the Dead is gone now, that means Saruman will be able to get away. And congratulations to Erby by the way, even though I don't know if he's gonna win this game or lose this game, but he was able to keep his Saruman alive all game long. So Saruman didn't die once, I think Lurtz died only one time, uh, while Eomir, Aragorn, uh, they got sniped down so many times. I mean, kind of makes sense because Lourdes is like a hero killer, hero pinner at least. You can cripple him down and then you have so many units around with upgrades. They are dealing massive amount of damage once they clump against a hero like Aragorn and are able to burst him down. And yeah, both the abilities are ready now. Summon Dragon and the Dragon Strike. Let's see where and when he's gonna use it. I feel like the, the Dragon Strike should be used potentially around this area so you end up killing all this stuff together and then you can use again the dragon summon around this area to kill all the production buildings and yeah, but he doesn't need to do it i think he has like enough units now to deal the damage he's looking for tom bombadil is gonna be ready arrow volley is gonna be ready earthquake is gonna be ready soon as well for, for the man of the west play dj premier the farms are getting bursted down and yeah man of the west play is dropping his command points cap now almost and we're gonna have the summon dragon now who's gonna be able to take down the marketplace first. Look the attack damage uh, he has, that's crazy. I mean, you think you have a level 2, level 3 structure and they are resistant? Hell no, they are not resistant at all in this situation because the Summon Dragon is dealing so much damage. Okay, I mean, what is kinda unfortunate in this situation is we have seen so many units but we, don't, we didn't see Gandalf once, which in this situation wouldn't change anything. Even Theoden is joining the fight, come on dude. <laughs> I wanna see Gandalf, but I feel like Gandalf is gonna get just crippled down by, by Lords, and then he's gonna die very fast. Okay, uh, Man of the West play is kinda surrounded now, he's gonna lose the Blacksmith level 3 as well. Earthquake is gonna be available very soon, but there won't be any follow-up. Eomir and his Rohirrim are trying to do something against Isengard, but you know, he has so many protection now, look here, towers, level 3 furnaces, look our towers. Even Vork sentries are around to defend himself. That's why in this situation it's not gonna be enough to send the units out one by one. Because they're not gonna deal any kind of damage. And yeah, he's getting like attacked big time. The fortress is pretty much the only thing which is alive. As Man of the West player doesn't give up. He's trying to build, rebuild the marketplace around this area to just get more and more resources. 
I see level 5 units on the field, level 5 Uruk pikemen. And as everything is falling apart, you can see how strong those Urukai and how strong those Isengard units are once they have the levels, once they have the upgrades. And the damage even against the fortress is gonna be very nice. Aragorn, the last man standing, has his Blade Master on cooldown. You can always use the uh, Elendil to make them run away. Atelas should be used, heal will be used. Can he get away here? Is heal ability available? Yes, it is. He's just trying to get level 10, but you can see this, these units are so strong, boys. So strong. And he was unfortunately not able to get level 10. Now Isengard player is just gonna commit to the fortress. Rebuild is gonna be available to delay, but it's not gonna deny. We have even the dragon strike still available. Erby is gonna be able to win against Man of the West from uh, from DJ Premier. And yeah, what a what a beautiful game, guys. We have seen almost every single PowerPoint ability from the Man of the West faction and also from the uh, Isengard faction, good against evil, this time was won by the evil part, by uh, our friend from Slovenia, Erby did it. And again, we're gonna have uh, many many games following up soon in the World Championship, we are almost done with the group stage. The round of 16 is gonna be amazing, we're gonna have best of 5 series between really great players, they all performed very well in the tournament so far. and. I would love to get to know you guys in the in the streams as well. I mean, if you don't have a Twitch account, just make it. Make an account, follow me there, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. I'm looking forward to meet you in the next live stream. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more content. Like this, you know, all the YouTube stuff, what they, are, what they used to say all the time. And see you in the next video. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace, guys.